from Gothamist Hotspots. NYPD data shows most shootings occur on the same blocks year after year. Absolutely shocking. And I'm not even sure why they would admit this or maybe they want you to think that these shootings are occurring in some of the most affluent neighborhoods in the most expensive city in the country. Who really knows what's going on? I certainly wouldn't want to jump to any conclusions. I mean, in San Francisco, they stopped publishing mugshots because some people were drawing conclusions. And how are these people even getting these weapons? They're basically illegal. It is incredibly difficult to get a weapon, a firearm in New York City legally. So perhaps they are being acquired illegally, which is fairly similar to the baby binning argument that the regime bots constantly like to make. But that aside, my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please, come on, please. It would help me a lot and cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend some money, you would buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. But they say, as children played at the Hilltop Playground in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, early one June morning, a stark reminder of violence was, visi was visible nearby. And here we go. Of course, they're going to paint a rosy picture of this pretty dark story. The green turf was empty, save for TV news crews whose cameras were pointed at several pairs of Crocs on the ground. The shoes remained from the previous night when stray bullets wounded Ruana Brown, 9, and her cousin Empress Alexander Davis, 11, as they played on the field. It's been going on for years since I was a kid, said Brown's mother, Melissa Alexander, who grew up in the neighborhood. I mean, I could talk till I'm blue in the face. What's going to happen? I want to see change. I'm hoping change comes soon. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen, especially with the political regime in New York. What do, you, what do you want them to do? You want them to make all guns illegal, even though it's highly likely that these young ladies were victims of illegal weapons? Brown returned home from the hospital the next day with a bullet wound in her knee. Davis, who'd been shot in her back, was still being treated. Could y'all stop the violence? I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It's horrible. I'm lost for words. And yeah, this has been going on for many years, which they do mention in the article that it's the same blocks for years that are, you know, falling victim to this gun violence. And I, of course, did live through it. And right. It's kind of a love hate thing. Shout out Chef G, who went to the Trump rally in the Bronx. Come on up here, fellas. How are you? man? Hey. Oh, you know, oh, I like that. I want to get that done. <laughs> President Trump, oh, man. Please. One thing, one thing I want to say. <laughs> one thing I want to say. They always going to whisper your accomplishments and shout your failures. Trump going to shout the wins for all of us. But when Flatbush Brooklyn was getting absolutely destroyed, I mean, there was memorials everywhere, candles, balloons, posters, right? And you kind of come to find out that it was largely Chef G and his crew that were responsible for that. And I'm not quite sure why he's not in jail now, but that too is a completely different story. Neighbors said the shooting spilled over from the nearby intersection of Dean Street and Howard Avenue, where at least 11 people have been injured by gunfire from 2020 to June of this year. And here's the map. It's pretty difficult to see, but I think I got a tech. Yeah, so here's a little bit more of a close-up of Brooklyn, right? This is just Brooklyn, uh, maybe a little bit of... No, this is just Brooklyn. But you can see everybody loves an infographic. They have the cute little color coding here. And um, you can kind of see that... Um, let's see, Church Avenue, Ocean Parkway. Okay, so look, I used to live on Ocean Parkway many years ago so it looks like they're not doing that bad right now but i promise you in 2020 that was an absolute war zone and um it's occurring in the same spots for many years but let's keep going with the uh with the article here gothamist analyzed city shootings during that window because it reveals the latest patterns of gun violence in new york city 
Yeah, it's the gun violence. It's not the people shooting the guns. They're not responsible for it, right? It, it's 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 similar to like the the phrase hate crime. It's like it's just a crime, right? And you can say, yeah, somebody's mean and they don't like you. That's why they did the crime. Gun violence. The the gun has to be operated by a person. But I digress. Um, from a spike in shootings during the pandemic to the gradual decrease the city has experienced over the last two years, the analysis shows there are eight other city blocks where 10 or more people were fatally shot or wounded during that same time period. Gotham has found that in many cases, the same blocks where shootings were concentrated, known as hot spots, had the most shootings year after year. Yeah, you know, kudos to, I mean, Gotham is a terrible publication, but kudos to them for actually doing the work and publishing this because you think they would want to hide it, but, you know, here we are. Gothamist uh, analysis of New York City shootings is the first to examine four years of verified gun violence. Right? You could just say shootings, right? Th this gun violence thing is obviously a talking point for the regime to make you believe that it was the gun that actually committed the crime. Okay? Incidents from the NYPD's open data portal which includes precise details about where and when shootings occurred the age and race of the victims okay tell us tell us tell us about that i could assume it's probably like you know 16 to 24 year old people of color and whether or not the shooting was fatal the data is far more comprehensive than the department's comp stat website and provides uniquely detailed uh, a uniquely detailed view of where shootings cluster and how gun violence patterns have played out since the pandemic. So let me guess, the solution to this issue is to just get all the guns off the street, right? I mean, even though it's clear that you can have a gun where you are far less likely to use it, meanwhile, in New York, where it's incredibly difficult to get a gun, you obviously need it more. You need it more, I should say. Uh, let's see. The NYPD's CompStat website does not distinguish between fatal and non-fatal shootings uh, does not name victims or suspects, does not include police-involved shootings. And there you go. They want to do that. They want to make sure that you know, uh, you know, the cops are probably involved in the majority of these. Just like there's another story from a couple months ago about how the New York Post, which is typically pretty good, went from saying, oh, um, um, a migrant shot two cops to the same story, but they changed the headline to, oh, uh, it was a shootout between migrants and, and a cop like so basically they try to make it seem like the migrant the criminal illegal wasn't really at fault it was a shootout it was mutual combat when obviously these people are running roughshod but i digress the map was built in collaboration with chris herman and fritz umbach criminology and data experts from cuny john j cuny cuny's community you whatever i don't know some college system out there john j college of criminal justice they helped verify and clean the data of repeats or overlapping incidents the resulting map shows how shootings have remained prevalent and persistent in very few and specific areas even as gun violence decreases citywide so that should let you know that while maybe the criminals they, they're sort of as they say clustering in one spot why would that be are there Drug war zones? Is it territory war? Are you going to come to those conclusions? Along with the stubborn persistence of these gun violence hotspots, the data also shows that gun violence is mostly contained to the same small areas over time. Just 4% of New York City's 120,000 blocks defined as a street segment between two intersections account for nearly all of the city shooting. Life even two or three blocks away from these nine hotspots can be dramatically different with less violence, fewer crimes, and residents who say they feel relatively safe. So even in the safe zones of New York City, it's like, ah, it's a little bit better. Gotham has visited the hotspots and surrounding blocks identified in the analysis and spent months with residents, families, police officers, anti-violence groups. Isn't that just the police officers? Oh, anti-violence groups? Yeah, I'm sure they're absolute scam artists and crime experts to learn why the same blocks experience a high number of shootings year after year. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not taking anything away from them doing actual research, but it wouldn't be very difficult to understand why the same areas are always being shot up. Different block, vastly different perceptions. Oh, 
Tyquan Howard was 16 when he collapsed on the block after being shot in the back in May 2020. He was taken to Brookdale Hospital for surgery, but didn't survive. On a recent visit to her old neighborhood, Howard's mother, Gail, said she thinks her son de- her son's death resulted from a conflict between residents on Sterling Place and the sprawling 1,200-unit Albany Houses complex. Yeah, so <laughs> it's in the hood, obviously. Like they're going to go on. And they're going to ramble, as these media outlets so love to do. Let's see here. Francine Doyle and Brenda Morris eat lunch outside their building on Sterling Place and Utica Avenue. Yeah, and look, these women probably have nothing to do with this. They've probably been in this area for years and seen it ebb and flow. Maybe it was really bad in the 80s. And then, you know, um, hair, uh, what is it? hair dye Giuliani maybe cleaned it up. And then uh, Eric Adams came around. Well, B- Bill de Blasio destroyed it. And then Eric Adams came around and, you know, they, they hated cops. They defunded the police, all that stuff. Generational hotspots. While Gotham's analysis examines the last four years, experts say many of the hotspots have been around for much longer. Absolutely. Experts from John Jay, Columbia University and elsewhere say it's not desolate areas that are scenes of most shootings just the opposite yeah obviously okay look i'm not gonna read all of this but oh look at this this guy is gonna clean up the streets dennis de leon 30 on the corner of west 129th and frederick douglas boulevard in harlem so that's all the way opposite of where these ladies are sitting in where are they at? um in brooklyn sterling place in utica Clear across the city, basically. This guy's up in Harlem. And look, it, it's not rocket science, bro. You can kind of tell where these... Oh, here we go. Rhetoric versus reality. Public perceptions and political rhetoric often suggest that crime and gun violence are rampant across New York City. But the data belies those narratives. Yeah, so um, they're admitting in a roundabout way, it's really just several blocks in several neighborhoods that are constituting everything. It's kind of like with the shoplifting, right? There's some stat where it's like a handful of people. It's like 60 people that are responsible for all of the crimes or all of the the shoplifting, I should say. It's absolutely crazy.